Greetings, greetings, greetings. It's Lisa. Welcome to the last Heal Talk Tuesday of the year, 2017. <sighs> it's been an incredible year, hasn't it? This is Lisa Bubari, and this is the Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. By profession, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, and a domestic uh, abuse consultant. But every single Tuesday, and we figured this out, that for the last year, over a year, I've been coming on every single Tuesday to be with you. And every week, there's been a new topic and something different we've been talking about. And it's all about healing either within or about something that we want to make a change. Hello. Hello, Cord. How are you? Anyhow, so today's topic is about closing the year with a bang. But more importantly, what does the end of the year mean to so many of us? We know that energetically, when it comes to the end of the year, it's usually time to celebrate, it's time to close books, it's close accounts, it's to sit. And so many people do their reflections for the new year, thinking about what they want to create and move forward in life with. What is it that we want? In the media, everywhere else, they talk about, do you have a new resolution that you're going to uh, make? Is there something new that you want to do? Do you have a New Year's resolution? And we'll talk about resolutions more in the new year. But if you can take, because New Year's Eve is Sunday, if you can take three hours on off for yourself on Saturday just to sit meditate if you want to you do prayerful or you go in your man's cave or women take time for yourself to pamper yourself take at least if you can three hours for you and you know what I'm all about threes right so in mind body and emotion so it's one hour just concentrating on healing your body, tending to your body. It's either walking, exercising, uh, getting a massage, pampering yourself, getting a bath. So take care of your body from the outside and the inside. One of the things that I talk about is, you know how we have beautiful lights outside on the houses? You go outside and you see all the lights, uh, the decorations in the house, especially lights on a beautiful Christmas tree. I think lights bring beauty. They lighten up everything, especially when it's dark time. And when you see the sparkles of the light, it just brings a twinkle and joy to you. And it's the same thing when we put a cologne on or women put the makeup on. It's the beautifying from the outside. And when we look good, we feel good. When we feel good, we look better and we are happier. And in turn, I believe our joy brings more joy and smiles to other people. So when we walk around with this inner light, inner glow, feeling good about ourselves, there is nothing more attractive than someone walking down the street or up the street or anywhere, coming down the stairs as you look up and you see this person with this inner glow. It's that confidence from the inside exuding that joy so that's taking care of your body a part of taking care of your body is if you are health healthier conscious 
if you do juicing or you eat healthy, every time you eat, how about for that one hour, eat something. And as you are about to eat, you bless your body by saying thank you to your body, by saying thank you for nourishing your body, for your body digesting it, for your body cleansing it, for your body doing all the good things. So choose something that brings joy to you and joy to your body. And put all judgment aside. If it is a scoop of ice cream, go ahead and enjoy that ice cream just like a little kid. If you have to lick it, if you have to eat it, the cone, the way you hold it, if it drips, look at the ice cream drip to the side of the cone and smile. So bring joy to that moment of whatever it is that you are eating and say thank you for whatever it is that you're eating and say thank you for your body. So that's one hour of tending to your body. Hello, Sona. Hi, Mariette. Hola, Rosa. Number two, tending to your, that was the body, mind. So one hour of, you can do meditation, you can journal, you can read something that you have been wanting to read you can write the whole year whatever transpired in the year and here's something about writing in a journal when we journal when i tell my clients how to journal i say do you journal and they say yes i write my diary journaling is not the, uh, keeping a diary what journaling is it's about what has transpired in the day but it's the emotional connection to that and the things that mean to you resonate with you and has made you feel something so it's not necessarily where you went who you talked to who called but if the call was meaningful if the call evoked something if the call helped you connect with someone this time is all about connections so if you are journaling connect with yourself if you have contacted or called people from the past or better yet just like what's happening in my life it's like somehow there is this energy that so many people from my past have been contacting me. And if they have been contacting you, you can write their names and next to it and write how does that make you feel and how does the connection feel and resonate with you in your core, in your heart, in your mind. Because there is a reason we are reconnecting with people at the end of the year. Remember, it's to close the year off. So we can close the year off by also letting go of things by forgiving, releasing, and apologizing for yourself, for holding on to a lot of resentments, negativity, and drama. Okay? So write those down. That's tending to the mind. Now, the spirit, the spirit or the emotions. Ah, there is nothing more beautiful than when we pray, when we meditate, when we do guided visualization, even hypnosis in a way is tending to the spirit to make that change from the inside out. So, Again, take three hours to tend to yourself in mind, body, and spirit. A part of spirit can also be a ritual. You going somewhere to for a hike, either in a group, and if you do with a group, take 
few moments by yourself to go away. And as you become one with yourself, close your eyes and listen. Listen to everything that surrounds you. Listen to all that is within you. Listen to the beat of your heart. Listen to the sound of nature. That is one of the most spiritual things we can do is to tap within ourselves and become aware of our surroundings. It's that internal prayer that it's called the spiritual connection. And spiritual connection is not always in a church, in a temple, or anywhere else. I remember my grandmother, she used to have this beautiful mantle at her house next to her door. And here's her ritual. Every single morning, she would wake up around 5 or 5.30 in the morning, get up, light a candle at her mantle, say her prayers, and open the door. And she would open the door one time, close, twice, close, three times, and she would go outside, as she would say, talk to Father, do her prayer, ask her Father, which is God, universe, whatever it is for you, for whatever it is that she wanted to happen that day. And she would always say, I surrender to you, for you know the best for me. And then she would walk in, close the door, and go back to bed. So I, too, have found rituals to be so beneficial. And that's one thing that it can be spiritual, and it's also a good ritual. What are your rituals? Share with me what rituals do you have, either daily rituals or rituals for closing the end of the year. I would love to see and hear your rituals. Hello, Bridget. Hi, Chris. Hi, Jesse. Welcome. Thank you for joining in. So mind, body, and emotions or spirit. Take care of that. Remember, so many people close the end by also closing the end to their life. Um, and it's okay. It's beautiful. It's the most precious thing that there is. And we remember people and everything at the end by having more compassion for our worldly place to be as humanity. Now, another thing is, hi, Jasmine. <laughs> Do you have a ritual for the end of the year? And here's the thing about end of the year or beginning of the year. Talking about resolutions. Resolutions, in a way, you know how many of us um, fail to keep up with resolutions when we do especially for weight or smoking or I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, or I'm going to get back to doing something. Let's not get back to anything. If there is anything we need to get and do is to move forward in life. What is it that I want to restart? I want to move ahead. What is it that I choose to do? And all of this is to set intention. When we set intention to do anything in life, that means I like what I want to do. I choose to do this. Plus, I am ready to move forward and do that. So that's so much joy and energy that we bring into this. When we create resolutions, that means there is a 
a, a thing of saying there is a resolute. That means there is something that we are resolving. Beginning of some things, beginning of the year, or what we intend to do, may be resolving an experience or resolving a problem. But if it is a weight or anything that we want to feel better and do, it's not a problem then. So it's, I know, you're going to say it's a word play, but words have so much power in our conscious mind and our subconscious mind. You see, our subconscious mind does not understand the word don't. Really. Just think of this. You keep telling a child, don't do this, don't do that, or don't touch. And then the child, that little tantrum child wants to go and what? Touch or do. That means when we say, I don't want to, the subconscious tears, I do want. So we cannot resolve something we want to create, right? Resolutions are for problems. Wanting to become thinner, wanting to become healthier, wanting to become a non-smoker, wanting to feel more confident, wanting to create or write or do anything in our life must come from I want to create it, I want to manifest it, I am going to, and I will. I hope that just this small little tidbit will help you set intention for the new year. Hmm. So, we have three hours of getting together, of setting intentions in mind and body and of emotions. Now, for the naysayers who say, I do not have three hours, remember when you say, I don't have three hours, break it down. You do have it if you choose to for yourself. Are you not worth three hours to yourself? You can even go with your family, you can go with your kids, and how about doing this? Tell your entire family, we're doing this together. You have one hour there, one hour there, one hour there, and each one can do their own thing. And for one hour that you're tending to either your mind or your body or your spirit or your emotions, they're doing the same thing. And they don't have to be doing the same thing as you are. They can choose to tend to their emotions while you're doing your body stuff. But wouldn't it be great that this year, into the new year, you create something that it's a group within your own family. It's a new game. It's a new way of creating a ritual of it's also connecting and bonding there is nothing more beautiful than bonding and coming together either with family or friends and yes i know not all families do we want to be around and not all friends do we want to be around so with that when you are writing and journaling how about you can also write that? I want to spend less time with whoever that brings me nothing but hardship or negativity or hurtful feelings. And be honest with it. You're writing all that so that you can also not only know it, but when you express it, you free it. And if you're not expressing it verbally, it's okay for you to express it on a piece of paper. And it's yours. And at the end, come New Year's Day, 
you can take that piece of paper that you don't want anyone to see and in a safe place burn it light it up and blow the ashes into the sky in a way that also frees you by expressing it and letting it go. So today I have given you tools and techniques in a way. And what those techniques are is to heal within by evoking what was, that means bringing the past to surface, embracing what is, which is the here and now, today, the reality, only to evolve to what it is that you want to become and manifest in your life. Why? Because you do matter and you deserve to be loved, you deserve to be healthier and wealthier. Prosperity is some of the things that it's absolutely wonderful i too am changing my entire world and i'm going to be doing the same thing with you come saturday i'm taking three hours to do exactly what i ask you to do as a matter of fact how about we do this all right how about for the next three days you know i'm all about threes right today is tuesday how about today uh this is today okay wednesday thursday friday three days in a row we come together and we will post one thing we did that it was good for our spirit our mind and our body every single day for the next three days which is wednesday thursday and friday and i will begin tomorrow morning I will say exactly what I've done, three things. It can be one thing for each one or three things for each one. Would that be good? We're doing this entire thing. We're coming together, creating this beautiful thing to manifest three things we set intention to do together. So as we do, I want to say thank you. And gratitude that setting intention if you were to do it the way I say means coming from gratefulness and setting that intention of being in gratitude of our mind of our body of our heart of our spirit and everyone that has been a part of our life, our journey, our life's journey. Good, bad, right, wrong, it doesn't matter. Last night I was talking to a friend of mine and we were discussing family and the hardships, the illnesses, our losses, challenges, struggles. But we also learned that through all this, has been times of laughter and coming together, hugs and tears, connections of joy and saying, I love you. Remember that. Even in the yin yang, where there is all, one side is black, one side is white. In the white, there is a black dot. In the black section, there is a white dot. There is no perfection in life, but we can make it an awesome one, even through our struggles. And remember, this too shall pass. How can I go through this day and know I can handle this? So I thank you for being a part of Heal Talk Tuesdays for the entire 2017. 
And the next time I see you, it will be a new day, a new year, a new beginning, manifesting something more beautiful. To close, I must also say and invite all the ladies to find right here on Facebook my 3E events that is coming up in March 24th, 2018. It's my sixth annual 3E event we're putting together. And the theme this year, this coming year, it's life's journey from pain to power. Incredible historic speakers that I have invited and I'm announcing it today. We're going to have Danisha Danielle, love you girl, uh, Dr. Marie Ambuni, love you my lady, and the Honorable Sue Wong, the fashionista to celebrities will be there. And I too will be speaking. And we've got another special, who's going to be the master, mistress or master of ceremonies. So to find out more, please go and to Facebook, I will put a link over here for you to purchase tickets. You can even find more information on 3eevent.com and sign up. Our early bird specials are good until January 14th. So get the tickets for $99 until then because after that, it's going to go up back to, uh, not back, it's going up to 147 for the entire day. We're going to have healing circle, drum, meditation, uh, exercises, speakers. It's going to be a day that when you walk in, from the moment you walk in, you're going to be evoking, embracing, and go home, involved and invigorated. So I thank you. Let's uh, end the year with a little bit of joy, festivities, and calling in the angels and all the good. May God bless you. May you be with all light and surrounded with goodness. Thank you. Hello, Tracy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Eileen. Hello, Mark. Thank you and goodbye for 2017.